Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos and welcome to another episode. Now do you remember Solar Nations from way back when? Well, unfortunately when that incident happened with the computer, some of that data was lost. So I'm going to have to start all over again. So for those of you who are kind of new to this, what I'm trying to do is make a stock series where Kerbin branches out, goes to the moon, Minmus, uh, Duna, and then out to the farther planets. But after a while, being able to build colonies and mine and stuff of this nature, after a while, those planets start to become independent of Kerbin. New governments are made, new, new traditions, different uh, ways of thinking. And of course, those ways of thinking might not be agreeable to the other, the way Kerbin thinks, or whatever the case may be. So, ideas and ideals clash. And that's when battles start, that's when territories are drawn, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. And with science mode, I'm able to make it so the science behind of it, behind it, grows steadily. So what happens is maybe Duna might have a newer fleet than Kerbin. Kerbin has uh, an aging fleet, you know, so Duna has the upper hand or something of that nature. Um, I'll use mining to not only mine for fuel, but also I'll make a set of rules so that they can actually use, I can use the mining in stock game to create actual ships in, you know, on Duna. Of course I'll use hyper edit, you know, because <laughs> I could use a mod, but I'm trying to stay away from mods. I'm trying to stay away from mods. You know, just go for game rules or whatever the case may be. But anyway, so what you're seeing here is me trying to get as much science as I possibly can around the KSC as well as Kerbin itself because of the simple fact that science is set down to 10% rewards or feedback or whatever and that means that I have to pretty much drain the entire surface of Kerbin of science before I can really start to get out to the moon or Minmus or or even Duna. Now I do use um, was it, was it uh, bio, biomes, show biomes when you hit Alt F12, uh, I thought I thought I heard a rumor that they were coming out with some sort of satellite that that you could put around Kerbin to show all the biomes or something of that nature. But the only reason why I'm using to show biomes is because if you really don't know where the biomes are in the first place, what where's the drive to try to create a craft to go and to uh, uh, to go and explore that biome? Where's the drive? It's not there because you don't know it's there to begin with. So there's no courageous mission to try to get a desert sample or uh, there is Badlands. That's right, Badlands. Badlands are like far few and in between. They're like the smallest pieces on Kerbin. If, um, if you never knew they existed, then you'd never even try to create a mission to go and get uh, surface samples or whatever off of them. So that's why I'm using Alt F12 uh, to show all the biomes. So I can go ahead and figure out where I'm going and uh, carry on from there. Now right here is when I have a really bad game glitch and Bill Kerman disappears. He just frickin' disappears. Uh, he was just collecting science, turned around, and he was gone. So no one knows where he is. He's nowhere to be found on the face of Kerbin. It's a mystery, a really big, huge mystery. Did he fall through a wormhole? Did the, did some sort of multi-dimensional space-time rift in space suck him out of this reality? You know, no one will ever know. So after collecting all the science I possibly could from the Kerbal Space Center, I went ahead and collected my bounty, which, <laughs> when science is at 10%, it's not a whole lot, but it's enough to start moving forward. So the pattern of scientific breakthroughs that I have to follow through this tech tree will have to be first a, a way to be able to transfer fuel from one spaceship to another. That way I don't have to launch a gigantic spaceship up into orbit just to get to another planet. I can go ahead and launch a series of smaller ones so they can either connect together or refuel each other. That's that's the plan. That's the first thing on my goal. Besides, of course, finding a way to store more battery power and gain energy. Now, ultimately, I want to be able to mine. 
because when I can mine, I can go ahead and start putting game rules down so that colonies can start becoming independent. They might start off as outposts, but then when they have the ability to mine, that means they can generate resources for themselves and build more ships or rovers or add to the colony or things of that nature. So they become independent and that's when the story really gets interesting because when you become independent and you're super far away from your from your neighboring or your uh, your parent system or parent uh, planet or government uh, things start to happen you gotta think for yourself you're by yourself you know um, different ways of doing things and of course when the parent planet starts saying hey you have to do it this way you're like well you're not out here you're you're not on Duna you don't have to deal with dust storms and everything else and radiation flares and whatnot you're over there living comfortably so uh, no we're not gonna do this and that's when that's when negotiations or should I say aggressive negotiations start to become a reality and of course Duna becomes independent has to make its own ships in order to defend itself that kind of thing so now that the X1 has done its job it's time to make the X2 the X2 has to get into orbit so I can start making surveillance around Kerbin's surface and get more science from the ob observations now there is a catch I'm not going to be doing testing of the craft until I start getting probe bodies to where I can actually start actually testing the crafts without having to endanger Kerbin lives. But for now, until we get to that technology, we're going to have to try to make the numbers as best as possible, try to build the craft as sleek as possible or as functional as possible, and of course make some sort of escape system for our Kerbals because we don't have the ability to test it out safely without endangering a Kerbal. These Kerbals are at the front seat, at the very edge of exploration, on the new horizons of Kerbin and Kerbal kind. Unfortunately, it's one of those dangerous, dangerous, dangerous jobs that only the bravest of Kerbal souls are able to take. This job, they know the risks. They know the risks. They know they could die at any second behind that big, giant, flaming rocket. This is not for the faint of heart. If Kerbals are to leave their cradle and conquer space, then they need the very finest of men and women of the Kerbal race to take that very dangerous first step into the stars. Now, the very dangerous part here is trying to find the correct flight plan for this craft. As you can see, I, I guess I don't... I uh, forget to pitch down sooner than I should have and once it started getting up to speed it became harder and harder for that tiny little reaction wheel inside the um, inside the capsule to turn the craft into a gravity turn uh, I start learning later on that you have to do that almost immediately when you get off the launch pad but for this launch I just barely make it into space Well, flight trajectory was looking good, re-entry was looking good, everything was green across the board. Um, unfortunately, I had accidentally set the parachute minimum pressure to the highest of 0 0.75. And that was my mistake. And even though I set the altitude for 5,000, the parachute would not deploy until that pressure was at 0 0.75. Or really high pressure which normally means right down on Kerbin's surface I didn't realize at the time that I had set it to that and I was I was tapping the space bar really hard I was clicking on the parachute I was going what the heck is going on here and before I realized what the problem was it was already too late so with that being said with the sound and light of a thousand thunderbolts the X2 and her pilot Jebediah Kerman walked out of our time and into the pages of history, forever becoming immortal. With the death of Jebediah Kerman weighing heavy on my mind, I went back to the X-2 and tried to make it as safe as possible so that something like that would never happen again, because no Kerbal dies in vain. With the lessons learned from the late Jebediah Kerman, the X-2-B was born it now is a lot safer and with a better flight plan.
So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos Human, signing off and have a good night.